Hello and welcome to Indus News Live from Islamabad. I'm Jawad Tehami and these are the headlines. In Afghanistan, the Taliban have warned of consequences if the foreign troops delay withdrawal past the August 31st deadline over the ongoing evacuations. Talking to the media, Taliban spokesman Sohail Shaheen said the move would mean an extended occupation, which he termed as a red line. Meanwhile, the group has appointed Haji Mohammad Idris as the acting head of the Afghanistan Central Bank to help bring order to a war-crippled economy. Israeli troops have martyred another Palestinian youth in the Arab city of Nazareth. Witnesses say the occupation forces also injured another Palestinian man with live bullets. Meanwhile, in occupied Jerusalem, dozens of illegal settlers under the protection of Israeli army stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque. Those were the headlines and detailed stories right after a short break. A statue. Welcome back and now for the news in detail. In Afghanistan, the Taliban have warned of consequences if the foreign troops delay withdrawal past the August 31st deadline over the ongoing evacuations. Talking to the media, Taliban spokesman Sohail Shaheen said the move would mean an extended occupation, which he termed as a red line. This comes after U.S. President Joe Biden said the airlift of Americans and tens of thousands of others from Kabul is accelerating but said he would not rule out extending the evacuations beyond the August 31 deadline set before the Taliban's swift takeover. Meanwhile, the group has appointed Haji Mohammad Idris as the acting head of Afghanistan's Central Bank to help bring order to a war-crippled economy. The appointment came as Afghan government-run and private banks have remained closed since August 2015, uh, rather, when the Taliban took control of Kabul. Meanwhile, the Taliban have taken control of three districts near the Panjshir Valley in northern Afghanistan. This comes a day after the anti-Taliban groups claimed to seize these districts of the Baglan province. Spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid says the Banu, Pule Hisar and Desala districts have been completely cleared of opposing forces. He said the group has seized Panjshir and is trying to resolve the situation peacefully. Earlier, Ahmed Masood, the son of anti-Soviet resistance leader Ahmed Shah Massoud refused to surrender the areas in his control. He called for the formation of a comprehensive government with the participation of the Taliban, but warned of an unavoidable war if the group refuses to hold dialogue. And for more on this, we have with us Sumera Khan, our correspondent from Kabul. Sumera, please update us about the ground situation in the Kabul city. Right now, I'm present here, and uh, the place where I'm standing right now is called Kuchai Gul Feroshi, Shahre Nau Kabul. It's the main business, it's one of the main uh, business hub streets of Kabul city. And uh, why I'm here, I just wanted to uh, talk to a few people, although they are not like uh, in, a, in, a, in a state of mind that they would be speaking so eloquently and easily to the camera because we can understand that what, what exactly they are going through, it's a transition indeed. But we wanted to see what's happening on the roads, what's happening 
happening uh, in, in in the business hub of Kabul uh, is is this, the the fact that people I was hearing that people are going back to their businesses and jobs. But when I arrived here, uh, I yes I saw that uh, businesses are in place. People have they have opened their restaurants, hotel, and where I'm standing right now, the place is famous for a tremendous food, a traditional tremendous food of uh, that we also uh, see back in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and here and Balochistan. So um, it's it's a kind of a lovely scene uh, that uh, people are coming back to normalcy. I also saw um, uh, women who were uh, uh, in, in a, uh, in, I have uh, a few uh, flower shops here and they were shopping here and uh, they were they, they looked quite satisfied and I also talked to them that what exactly they are feeling right now. So they were they were hopeful for for a peaceful transition in the country and uh, they were also hopeful for people uh, for the development of people from the new uh, administration in Afghanistan and they were also hopeful that there would be no sign of war in future so uh, I'll be um, reporting more from here and uh, I, I have a lot to cover right now because it's a huge area just in Kabul I have to cover um, a lot of streets they have uh, traditional food they have uh, traditional dresses and uh, um, uh, as I said, there is a lot to cover. So I'll keep uh, posting uh, our viewers about that, that what is what is happening in Kabul right now. But now, right now, I'm here at a square of a city and you can see life is going so normal. Uh, I'm, I'm reporting for Indus News right now and uh, I'm hearing someone, some kids are calling me. So let's see what they have to say, what, what they have to, say to me. I'll, I'll be uh, bringing all those views to the viewers directly. Signing off from Shehre No Kabul, Indus News. Sumaira Khan, our correspondent in Kabul, thank you very much for the updates. Now, moving on, Pakistan has appreciated Saudi Arabia's initiative to convene an emergency meeting of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation on Afghanistan. In a tweet, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said he ha held a telephonic conversation with his Saudi counterpart, Prince Faisal bin Farhan. Qureshi and Prince Farhan both agreed that a peaceful Afghanistan is vital for the whole region. He apprised Prince Faisal about Islamabad's efforts to evacuate international diplomats, teams and other foreign nationals. Qureshi said it is important for the world to support the people of Afghanistan. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has expressed Islamabad's support for a broad-based and inclusive government in Afghanistan. He said he will visit the Central Asian Republics and Iran to discuss the ongoing Afghan situation. He warned anti-peace forces are still active in the country. The Foreign Minister also slammed Indian media over its irresponsible behavior and called on New Delhi to abandon its limited thinking. Meanwhile, Germany has praised Pakistan for its cooperation in repatriation of its citizens. Berlin's ambassador said withdrawal of its people from Kabul would have not been possible without Islamabad's support. Most stories to follow right after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In India's capital, New Delhi, cases of women's rape have increased by 43%, while overall crime against women has jumped by 63%. Overall, the country sees 88 women rape cases every single day, which means three women are raped in India every hour. More in this report. In the year 2019, Indian opposition leader Rahul Gandhi called India the rape capital of the world due to the shockingly high number of gruesome sexual violence cases. Two years after that statement, the situation in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's so-called shining India is getting even worse. The recent crime data released by Delhi police shows that Modi's India has become increasingly unsafe for women. Crimes against women have soared 63% higher with 833 women raped only in the capital so far this year. Female molestation has increased 39% with 226 women murdered. Most recent data by India's National Crime 
and Records Bureau shows that 88 women are raped every day in India, which makes it three every hour. According to the World Population Review, over 22 women were raped in India in 2021, which is second only to South Africa with 66,000. The special Indian NGO for children called Cry Says Minors are the biggest victims of sexual assault in India. They said it has increased by a whopping 500% over the past decade and now one sexual crime against children in India every 15 minutes. India's Ministry of Women Development has also pointed out that sexual harassment in government offices is rising. In fact, the state of affairs of women's rights in India can be measured by the fact that killing a girl right after her birth is on the rise in the country. For more on this, we are joined by Cynthia Ricci, a social activist from Islamabad. Ricci, thank you very much for your time. India is overzealous about pointing fingers at other countries while its own government data shows that the women in India are becoming increasingly unsafe. Uh, what do you believe is the chief cause behind this? I believe that uh, this is classic distraction, deferred deflection, uh, unfortunately, on behalf of the Indian government's part. Uh, they are largely seeing Pakistan as an increasing economic threat. And uh, uh, again, it's most unfortunate at the risk of the, the relations between the people that uh, in India, unfortunately, is clouded by its own obfuscation techniques. A research by an Indian NGO for children has revealed that minors in India are a chief target of sexual crimes that have increased 500% over the past decade. Uh, what do you think the Indian government failed to prevent this ex exponential increase? I think the Indian government, unfortunately, again, continues to be uh, preoccupied with its own image abroad to the point to where it's self-delusional internally. So, Cynthia, after the horrific New Delhi rape incident that shook the world in 2019, the Indian government blamed films and media for it. Do you agree that these really are the root causes? I do believe that uh, media, film, TVs can tra portray a, a, a vast... Uh, narrative that is largely controlled by the Indian government. And if it's controlled by the Indian government, which of course it would be, then the Indian government would ultimately be responsible for these uh, unfortunate uh, psychological influence operations on its own people. So Cynthia, Prime Minister Narendra Modi projects this image of shining India globally. Is it fair to see GDP as the only matrix of national development when thousands of women and children suffer through sexual crimes every year in India? Absolutely not. Uh, you have to look at online metrics, but more importantly, on my online reality. And unfortunately, uh, the bias that we're seeing is just not portraying an accurate reality of the people's needs. Uh, the people of India are a lovely people. The people of Pakistan are a lovely people. And it's to the benefits of regional peace and stability in authentic terms for the government to get its head, extract its head out of this Cynthia Ritchie, thank you very much for talking to Indus News. We really appreciate that. Moving on, Israeli troops have martyred a Palestinian youth in the Arab city of Nazareth. Witnesses say the occupation forces also injured another Palestinian man with live bullets. In occupied Jerusalem, dozens of illegal settlers under the protection of Israeli army stormed Al Aqsa Mosque. Earlier, the occupation army also raided the archaeological areas in Sebastia, northwest of Nablus. Meanwhile, Human Rights Watch says by destroying four high rise buildings in Gaza City in May, Israel violated the laws of war. Palestinian groups in Gaza also pledged to continue protests along the border to pressure Israel to remove its blockade. This comes amid outrage over the reports of Egypt closing the Rafah crossing on its border with the Gaza Strip until further notice. The U.S. says it does not have hostile intent towards Pyongyang and is open for dialogue anytime and any place. The country's special envoy, Sung Kim, said this while addressing media after meeting with his South Korean counterpart in Seoul. The two sides held a talk on resumption of dialogue with Pyongyang amid the renewed tensions over the Allies' ongoing military drills. They also discussed possible humanitarian aid to the country. Sung said the ongoing U.S.-South Korean military exercises are long-standing, routine, and purely defensive in nature.
Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi is briefing the media regarding the evacuation efforts being carried out by Pakistan from the Afghan city of Kabul. Evacuation. I briefed uh, the uh, Secretary General of OIC on Pakistan's perspective on the Afghan situation. And you are aware that yesterday in Chadda there was a special meeting convened uh, of the uh, uh, permanent representatives uh, based uh, uh, in, in Jadda of the executive committee of the OIC. This afternoon I had, a, uh, I had a discussion and a telephonic conversation with the Saudi uh, foreign minister. Besides discussing the Afghan situation, uh, uh, he expressed an interest uh, uh, in uh, shifting uh, their uh, uh, embassy staff uh, that was located in Kabul to Islamabad, uh, you know, uh, for the time being. Uh, and Pakistan uh, assured him of uh, facilitation and our support, and we welcome that decision. Uh, now, this presser is about evacuation. Uh, I'm happy to share with you that all the interactions that I've had in the last 48 hours, people, foreign ministers have been appreciative of the role played by Pakistan, the facilitating role played by Pakistan in helping evacuate uh, their nationals. We have um, evacuated diplomats, as well as their staff. We've helped evacuate uh, members, representatives of the international organizations and INGOs, and a large contingent of uh, media, international media, that was uh, based in Kabul. We have uh, uh, our embassy in Kabul is uh, working 24-7. Our uh, ambassador uh, is in Kabul, uh, doing a great job in a difficult situation. Uh, uh, we've uh, collected uh, and shifted uh, our staff that was, you know, posted at different consulates to Kabul to uh, facilitate and assist uh, this gigantic work that is uh, that has been undertaken uh, and the, he uh, they are uh, assisting uh, the ambassador in kabul visas are being entertained are being given to applicants who are applying for visas uh, and in certain cases because of paucity of time uh, you know uh, people have been uh, put onto the plane and visas have been given on arrival. So we've introduced uh, uh, that facility as well. And I'll share with you, uh, 409 uh, people were given <coughs> visas on arrival in Islamabad. Uh, our embassy uh, and our uh, ambassador is constantly in touch with the local authorities uh, in uh, Kabul, ensuring uh, safety and safe transportation of those people who are coming into our embassy uh, in safety and then have to be transported to the airport. By and large, my information is that the situation in Kabul is uh, calm but there's pressure uh, around the airport. There are thousands of people uh, stranded uh, at the airport trying, uh, desirous of leaving. Uh, the number keeps fluctuating, but it's a large number. And that is, uh, you know, the uh, focus of attention of uh, media, international media as well. Uh, and the rest of the city, which is, you know, functioning uh, close to normal, uh, is uh, not being focused. 
uh, we've set up a cell, <coughs> evacuation operation cell at the Ministry of Interior. This was done uh, 15th night and the cell has been in operation since 16th of August. This is manned 24-7. All stakeholders are present under one roof and when I say all stakeholders in that cell uh, you have representatives of the Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Civil Aviation Authority, FIA, ISI and Islamabad Police. The idea to put them together is uh, a quick response and uh, you know uh, uh, to accelerate inter ministerial coordination. We are trying to uh, facilitate the movement uh, of uh, evacuees, whether they're coming by land or by air. We also uh, established a facilitation center at the Islamabad International Airport. This, again, this facilitation center uh, has representation of all stakeholders. It is manned around the clock uh, and they're managing and monitoring arrivals and departures. They are there to facilitate boarding, lodging at the airport. We have set up uh, a crisis management unit uh, at the foreign office uh, and that again is working around the clock so that if missions require information, assistance, they can layers with them. So far, uh, since the 16th of August, uh, five PIA flights uh, have uh, operated between Islamabad and Kabul and on these flights uh, we have brought back 542 foreign nationals and uh, 91 Pakistanis. We've also been uh, giving permission for uh, overflight, you know, we are liberally uh, giving permission for overflight, you know, and, uh, you know, our airspace is being, uh, is, is being uh, uh, allowed, its use is being allowed. And so far, 56 uh, such permissions have been given. Landing permission is also being given. Uh, uh, we could not give a blanket permission, but uh, we have uh, uh, shared this with everyone that we will facilitate all requests to make it easier uh, for them. Uh, and so far, 17 foreign airlines have benefited and they have undertaken 133 sorties uh, to carry people out of Kabul. 28 nationals of 28 countries have benefited from the facility that Pakistan is providing. Uh, World Bank officials have benefited uh, and we have successfully evacuated 293 World Bank officials based in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan. In total, so far, we have, uh, Pakistan has facilitated the evacuation of 3,234 uh, foreign nationals and, and, and uh, you know, international organization reps. Out of these 3,234, 323 are Pakistanis and the rest are foreigners. I want to, through this presser, assure uh, uh, the international community that Pakistan, as a responsible country and as a partner in peace, will continue uh, to be supportive. Our objectives are aligned 
uh, we are working for a similar purpose, that is safety, security of uh, everyone, their nationals as well as our funds. Our desire is to have peace and stability uh, in Afghanistan. We are working for an inclusive uh, uh, interim arrangement over there so that it has not just broad-based broad based representation, it has wider acceptability. Uh, and this role uh, is being recognized. Uh, I am happy to share with you, every foreign minister that has engaged with me has, uh, whatever I shared with them, my assessment of the situation in Afghanistan, what we are doing, what uh, what we intend to do, they have their views are in sync with us. You know, our thinking and the international thinking is aligned, uh, and they feel that Pakistan is playing a very vital and a very critical role in these challenging times. Uh, I would like to uh, acknowledge and appreciate the work of our uh, staff uh, in, in, in uh, Kabul and our ambassador and his team. They are doing a wonderful job. Uh, so keep it up and uh, the world is looking towards Pakistan. You are aware of the fact that many embassies, uh, well, in fact, very few embassies today are uh, functioning in, in uh, Kabul. And if I am, uh, if I'm not wrong, perhaps five, only five, are functioning in 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 uh, in, in uh, Kabul, and Pakistan is one of those five. So Pakistan is playing its role. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Foreign Minister. Thank you, uh, Kaiwin. Uh, the Honorable Foreign Minister has, has kindly agreed to take questions. May I request uh, those desirous of posing a question to please uh, indicate uh, by raising your hands and please also introduce. Uh, Mateen Adhisar, may I start with you? Uh, thank you, Mr. Foreign Minister. You have spoken in detail about your interaction with your counterparts of Europe and elsewhere. What specific cooperation they are seeking from Pakistan, number one. And probably tomorrow you will be undertaking a regional visit. So what is the purpose of this regional visit since the change has already taken place? What, what consultations you are going to have with, with these regional leaders and talk about inclusive government? Sure. Why inclusive government is getting late? Thank you. Uh, what are they wanting from Pakistan? Yes. Uh, they are wanting uh, Pakistan's help in evacuation, which we are, uh, which we are sort of, um, we are helping, uh, and they're acknowledging that. They uh, want uh, Pakistan to uh, uh, promote uh, an inclusive uh, arrangement uh, set up over there, which Pakistan believes in. Uh, we feel that uh, Afghanistan is a country which, is, uh, uh, which has a uh, number of ethnic groups and uh, uh, all ethnic groups are important. They have a say, they have a role to play, and the wider the representation, the more acceptability that arrangement will have with the international community. I will be leaving, as you pointed out, uh, um, for four countries tomorrow. I'll be visiting uh, Tajikistan, I'll be visiting Uzbekistan, I will be visiting uh, Turkmenistan, and I'll be visiting Iran. Um, the fifth country is uh, China. I've had a detailed uh, uh, telephonic conversation with uh, the Foreign Minister of China, State Councillor Wang Yi, uh, on, um, on the situation uh, in Afghanistan and what role uh, we as immediate neighbors can play. And the sixth neighbor, of course, is Pakistan. The idea, the objective of going out is to hear their assessment and see what are the immediate
major challenges the neighbors are facing can face how we can collectively uh, devise a strategy in dealing with the refugees if that situation arises fortunately uh, the the uh, the immediate uh, scare of a huge influx has somewhat subsided uh, because of the situation in afghanistan which is more or less uh, calm uh, but uh, that need can arise in in the days uh, ahead how do we manage our uh, trade uh, crossing points with afghanistan how do we uh, deal with people uh, you know uh, who you know normally uh, come in and out uh, of afghanistan you know we as you know at an average we had 25 to 30000 afghans coming into pakistan on a daily basis that's a huge number uh, how do we deal with the challenge of uh, covid 19 uh, because the situation in afghanistan i believe is challenging and how do we uh, how do we help them and how do we protect ourselves uh, because we're all going through you know and pakistan is going through its fourth wave how do we deal with the uh, uh, counter terrorism you know what strategy should we have on that uh, there are so many uh, uh, challenges that the immediate neighbors face and opportunities uh, that uh, immediate neighbors can benefit from uh, in afghanistan and inshallah hopefully uh, when it's peaceful and stable how we can uh, move forward uh, in um, uh regional connectivity you know that objective of regional connectivity how can that be achieved uh so it's important uh to have a uh, to consult with them and to have a coordinated regional approach it's important uh because we have said it's a shared responsibility uh and immediate neighbors uh, have uh, an important role to play can we have one from this side um, in third row mr hader uh, zulkarnain hader followed by the uh, lady in the second row on the right side please yes, sir, sir. Uh, this is shaukat parachar from my television sir sorry uh, Excellency the Foreign Minister of Pakistan yesterday some western media released a report that uh, Taliban formed a commission on TTP and thereby they have uh, hinted if Pakistan uh, announces a general pardon these TTP members can go back with their families to Pakistan so my question is uh, the assassins of uh, over 80000 Pakistanis including uh, general sanawla niazi general mushtaq sir general of pakistan and your former leader who respected you a lot bin zair bhutto whether they will be pardoned what has been their response if conveyed to pakistan what the um Afghans and the Taliban have said is that they will not allow their soil to be used against anyone any country you are aware of the fact that TTP was using Afghan soil against Pakistan uh our concerns are genuine uh and our expectations are also uh natural they should give up what they have been doing and we expect we expect uh um, that uh the leadership that will evolve you know and assume responsibility in, in the near future uh would uh keep an eye on not just the ttp 
on all terrorist organizations because we would not want to see Afghanistan become a safe haven for any uh, terrorist uh, outfit. Thank you, sir. Uh, Excellency Foreign Minister, I would like to know that now the Taliban government has almost formed. The government of Pakistan will not recognize the Taliban government or not recognize it. Secondly, you have been in contact with your US counterpart. At this stage, do the Americans want to know what kind of cooperation you want? Please tell us. And some of the TTP's intention of the Taliban have given us to our Afghan Taliban हमारे हवाले किया जाए इस पे भी बता दीजिए शुक्रिया बिल्कुल आपने दोस्त फरमाया कि हमें लोग मतलूब हैं हमें टीटीपी के बहुत से लोग मतलूब हैं जिन्होंने हमारे यहाँ जो दशक गर्दाना कार्रवाइयों में मुलाकात हैं जिन्होंने मासूम शहरियों को निशाना बनाया है और उनका उनका तदारक Involved in massacring uh, the common public over here in Pakistan. कोशिश होनी चाहिए और हम तबक्को करते हैं कि वो पाकिस्तान जो खैर सगाली चाहता है, पाकिस्तान जो उनके बारे में अच्छी राय रखता है, अफगानिस्तान आम के बारे में अच्छी राय रखता है, उनके खुशहाल मुस्तकबिल में एक दिलचस्पी रखता है। وہ پاکستان کی بھرائی کے بارے میں بھی اتنی ہی دلچسپی سے غور و فکر کریں گی اور پاکستان کی اناسر کی خوشتہ شکل کریں گی اور اس کے بارے میں 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 اور پاکستان کی بھی اکسپیکٹ کہ افغان پاکستان کی بھی اکسپیکٹ کہ اس جیسے کو پاکستان وہ ساپ کا حکمران تھے وہ آج موجود نہیں ہے وہ اخوانستان چھوڑ چکے ہیں آپ کے علم میں ہے کہ اشرفانی صاحب اس وقت یو اے ای میں ہیں اور بہت سے لوگ جو ہیں جو کابینہ کے ممبران تھے وہ آج اخوانستان میں موجود نہیں ہیں اس وقت ایک خلا ہے ہماری خواہش ہے کہ یہ خلا جلد از جلد پر کر دیا جائے تاکہ کوئی اس کا ناجائز فائدہ نہ اٹھائے اور جو امن اور استحکام کی جو ہماری منزل ہے اس کی طرف ہم آ کے بڑھتے چلے جائیں اب فیصلہ تو افغانوں نے کرنا ہے اور مشاورت سے کرنا ہے خوشائند بات یہ ہے کہ آپس میں ان کی گفت و شنید ہو رہی ہے آپس میں آپ کے علم میں ہے کہ طالبان کا وفد جو کی ملاقات ہوئی ہے ڈاکٹر عبداللہ عبداللہ سے ہوئی ہے گلبدین حکمت جار صاحب سے ہوئی ہے حامد کرزائی صاحب سے ہوئی ہے اور وہ جو اپنا ارسٹ وائل نوردن الائنس کی قیادت تھی یا ہے ان سے بھی رابطے میں ہیں پنشیر میں بھی ان کے رابطے ہیں گفتگو جاری ہے تو امید کی جا سکتی ہے کہ اس گفتگو کو جلد از جلد مکمل کیا جائے اور ایک ایسا ڈھانچہ مرتب کیا جائے جس سے کہ دنیا کو ایک جو کہتے ہیں ایک غیر یقینی جو صورتحال ہے وہ ختم ہو اور ایک مستقبل پرامن حل کی طرف افغانستان آگے بڑھ سکے ہم جو اپنا رول پلے کر سکتے ہیں ہم اپنا رول پلے کر رہی ہیں اور ہم توقع کرتے ہیں کہ خطے کے دیگر ممالک بھی ہماری مدد کریں گے اس میں اور ایک مقصد یہ پڑوسی ممالک پہ جانے کا یہی ہے کہ سب پر یہ ان کو احساس دلوایا جائے کہ یہ ہماری ایک مشترکہ کاوش اور کوشش ہونی چاہیے اور اس میں ہمارا مشترکہ مفاد ہے آپ کے علم میں یہ ہے کہ پاکستان ایک پڑا اہم فورم ہے جس کو آپ ایکسٹینڈڈ ٹرویکہ کہتی ہیں یا ٹرویکہ پلس کہتی ہیں جس میں امریکہ ہے جس میں چین ہے جس میں روس ہے ان کے ساتھ بھی ہماری گفت و شنید مشاورت جاری ہے اور ہماری خواہش ہے کہ اس موثر اور فعال فورم کو ہم استعمال کر کے 
अपनी जो हमारा जो एक शेयर्ड ऑब्जेक्टिव है उसकी तरफ आगे बढ़ पाए प्लीज जेंटमैन एट द बैक मिस्टर खालिद प्रैप्स जनरल खालिद महमूद एक्सप्रेस टीवी से शाह साहब आप क्या देख रहे हैं कि तालिबान में इतनी कैपेबिलिटी है कि वो पूरे अफगानिस्तान को कंट्रोल करके वहां पे अमन कायम कर लेंगे दूसरा ये है कि इंडियन मीडिया और इंडियन पॉलिटिशियन जो है वो मसलसल पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ अभी तक वही रवैया रखे हुए हैं कि पाकिस्तान मुला अब्दुल गनी ब्रदर और हिकमत यार जैसे ग्रुपों को सपोर्ट कर रहा है आप इस पर क्या कमेंट करेंगे देखिए उनमें ये अहलियत है या नहीं वो तो वक्त साबित करेगा वक्त साबित करेगा इस वक्त तक अभी तो ये इब्तदा है जो आ, इन शुरुआत में अगर आप उनका उनके बयान देखें आ, उनका जो माइंडसेट है उसको देखें तो उसमें खासी संजीदगी दिखाई दे रही है आ, मिसाल के तौर पर वो ऐलान कर चुके हैं कि अब मजीद जंग का कोई जवाब नहीं है वो एक आम माफी का ऐलान कर चुके हैं जनरल एमनिस्टी का वो कह सकते वो कह चुके हैं और कह रहे हैं कि हम किसी के खिलाफ इंतकामी कार्रवाई करने का इरादा नहीं रखते हम अपनी सरजमीन को दहशत गर्दी के लिए इस्तेमाल करने की इजाजत नहीं देंगे हम ये जो पॉपी कल्टिवेशन है और ड्रग कल्चर है उसकी बेहकनी में हम संजीदा हैं तो ये सब जो बयान हैं ये हौसला अफजा हैं मैं समझता हूं और पाकिस्तान की ख्वाहिश है कि इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी को उनके साथ अपने रवाबित बरकरार रखने चाहिए रवाबित तो हैं आपके इल में है कि अगर रवाबित ना होते तो पीस प्रोसेस जो है जो दोहा में जिसका आगाज हुआ वो आगे कैसे बढ़ता वो जो अमन का मुआदा हुआ था जिसमें अमरीका ने और तालिबान ने दस्खत किए थे तो वो कैसे होते आपके इल में है कि दुनिया के अहम ममालिक उनके साथ गुफ्त शुनीद कर रहे हैं आपके इल में है कि उनका वफद चीन भी गया आपके इल में है कि वो मॉस्को भी जा चुकी हैं आपके इल में है वो ईरान भी जा चुकी हैं जी तो आ, उनसे लोग इंगेज तो कर रहे हैं आ, अब ये इंगेजमेंट मेरी राय में अगर बरकरार रहती है और उनकी वो जो एक पॉजिटिव जो मैसेजिंग है उसकी हौसला अफजाई की जाती है तो उसके बेहतर नतज निकल सकते हैं चैलेंजेस अभी बहुत हैं ये आ, आसान नहीं है आ, आपको पता है कि एक माजी का एक, एक जिसे कहते हैं ना एक ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट भी मौजूद है आपस में हरीफ भी रहे हैं आ, अब एक ट्रांजिशन है हमारी ख्वाहिश क्या है कि वो ट्रांजिशन जितना स्मूथ हो सके उतना अफगानिस्तान की बेहतरी है इसी में अफगानिस्तान की भलाई है हमारी नजर इस वक्त अफगानिस्तान की आवाम पर है क्योंकि हम समझते हैं कि उन्होंने चार दहाइयों में बहुत कर्ब देखा है हम समझते हैं कि 20 साल उन्होंने अमन हो तो इसलिए हम अपना किरदार भी अदा कर रहे हैं पाकिस्तान देखिए उनका हम तो इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी से बारहा कहते रहे और इस वक्त आज जो एक स्मेयर कैंपेन है दिखाई दे रहा है 
आप मतलब है आप साहिब नजर हैं और आप चीजों पे नजर रखते हैं तो आप देख रहे हैं कि इस वक्त इस वक्त सन्नाटा और सफे मातम कहां बिछी है जी और जी आ, 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 आपके इल्म में है कि कहां है आ, अब हमारी ख्वाहिश है कि नई दिल्ली पुरानी सोच को तर्क करते और पुरानी सोच क्या थी स्पॉइलर की दुनिया के साथ अगर वो चलना चाहते हैं तो दुनिया क्या चाहती है दुनिया चाहती है अमन इस्तेकाम इंक्लूसिव गवर्नमेंट और ये क्या चाह रही है इंडिया इट्स पास्ट अप्रोच और द प्रीवियस अप्रोच ऑफ बींग दी स्पॉयलर एंड इट शुड लुक एट वट द वर्ल्ड वॉन्ट्स नाउ एंड द वर्ल्ड वॉन्ट्स पीस चाहिए कि वो जिम्मेदाराना किरदार अदा करे इस वक्त वो गैर जिम्मेदाराना किरदार अदा कर रहे हैं मिसाल के तौर पर उनका मीडिया बात की तहकीक ही नहीं करता उन बकौल उनके मीडिया के मैं तो कल काबुल था जी और मैं यहां था आपके सामने मौजूद था तो जब इस किस्म की आपने सवाल भी किया था जब इस किस्म की वो गैर जिम्मेदाराना गुफ्तु करेंगे तो उससे उनकी अपनी क्रेडिबिलिटी मुतासर होती है हिंदुस्तान को भी जरा दूरस्थ सोचना चाहिए कि अगर अफगानिस्तान के हालात बेहतर होते हैं तो उसमें उनका फायदा है नुकसान नहीं है तजारत होती है स्टेबिलिटी होती है कनेक्टिविटी होती है तो क्या सिर्फ पाकिस्तान मुस्तफ़ होगा पूरा खिता मुस्तफ़ होगा तो उन्हें इस अंदाज में सोचने की जरूरत है और जो माजी में उनका मनफी रवैया था उसको तर्क करने की जरूरत है सैयद ओम शिराजी सच न्यूज टी वी से मेरा सवाल यह है कि कुछ अर्सा कबल जब ट्रंप एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन थी तो बड़े गर्म जोश तरह के तल्लु नजर आ रहे थे वजीर आजम इमरान खान का विजट फिर उनकी फैमिली के साथ फोटो सेशन लेकिन लग यूं रहा है कि जो बाइडन इंतजामिया के साथ पाकिस्तान के तल्लुक जो हैं जो अपेरेंटली नजर आ रहा है उस अंदाज में नहीं है जिस तरह रिपब्लिकन की हकूमत के साथ थी उस तरह डेमोक्रेट्स के साथ नहीं है आ, कुछ चीजें ऐसी होती हैं जो हेड ऑफ स्टेट के लेवल के तय करना होती है तो अभी तक अमरीकी जो सदर है उन्होंने फोन नहीं किया वजीर आजम इमरान खान को और इस वक्त खिते की सबसे अहम तरीन डेवलपमेंट्स हो रही हैं तो आया ये हमारी सफारती कमजोरी है या अगर जो बाइडन कॉल नहीं करते हैं तो इससे जो है अमरीका को नुकसान होगा और क्या मुमकिन नुकसान वो हो सकता है अमरीका को कि पाकिस्तान को अगर अमरीका के हेड ऑफ स्टेट जो है वो लूप में नहीं ले रहे अगर हमें अगर हमें कौमी सतह पर फोन कॉल की इतनी ख्वाहिश है और पूरी मीडिया बार हार ये सवाल कर चुकी है तो मैं आपकी इतला के लिए कह दूं कि मेरी सेक्रेटरी ऑफ स्टेट से तीन फोन कॉल्स तो हो चुकी हैं और अगर जरूरत पड़ी तो चौथी भी हो जाएगी और आ, मुझे यकीन है मुझे यकीन है कि जो हमारा शेयर ऑब्जेक्टिव है उसको हासिल करने के लिए मैं जब फोन उठाऊं मुझे उन तक रसाई मिल सकती है मुझे कोई दुश्वारी नहीं है मुझे कोई दुश्वारी नहीं है और उन्होंने मुझे खुद कहा कि आई एम अवेलेबल वेन एवर रिक्वायर्ड अब उन्होंने अपने सिस्टम में जिम्मेदारी उनको सौंपी है उनको जिम्मेदारी सौंपी है वो उनके फोकल पर्सन है उनको कहा गया है कि वो इंगेजमेंट्स करें तो जिसको जिम्मेदारी सौंपी है उनके साथ हमारी गुफ्त शुनीद हो रही है जो यहां निगोशिएटिंग को निगोशिएट के जो एक्टिविटीज थी उनको वसी कर रहे थे एम्बेसडर जल में खलीलजाद उनके साथ हमारा मुसलसल रहा है जी आपको बिल्कुल किसी किस्म की घबराहट नहीं होनी चाहिए अमरीका के साथ नहीं नहीं मैं आज कर रहा हूं मैं फिर आपको बता रहा हूं अमरीका के साथ हमारे ताल्लुक बिल्कुल सही हैं हमारा ऑब्जेक्टिव एक है हमें परेशानी होती अगर उनका ऑब्जेक्टिव और हमारा ऑब्जेक्टिव मुख्तलिफ होता हमारा ऑब्जेक्टिव एक है और उस ऑब्जेक्टिव के हसूल के लिए हम एक दूसरे की मदद हमें करनी चाहिए आपने देखा कि जब नेशनल सिक्योरिटी कमेटी का इजलास मुनद किया गया 
उसके स्टेटमेंट को आप गौर करें उस स्टेटमेंट में जब इस इंतजामिया पर बेपनाह तनकीद हो रही थी अमेरिका के अंदर और हो रही है तो पाकिस्तान ने फोल कॉन का इंतजार नहीं किया पाकिस्तान ने जो सही बात थी उसका अयादा किया और हमने कहा कि यह हकीकत है ट्रंप एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ने यह इकदाम उठाए थे विड्रॉल का फैसला कर चुके थे बात यहां तक पहुंच चुकी थी वो ड्रॉ डाउन शुरू कर चुके थे आ, वो एक कट आउट डेट दे चुके थे और इस इंतजामिया को एक गिवन सिचुएशन से वो दो चार हुई और उन्होंने अपने रिव्यू के बाद उसी चीज को जो एक वहां बाईपार्टिजन कंसेंसिस दिखाई दे रहा था और दे रहा है उसको वो आगे लेकर चले हमने तो एक इस मुश्किल वक्त में पाकिस्तान फॉरेन मिनिस्टर शाह महमूद कुरैशी वाज ब्रीफिंग मीडिया रिगार्डिंग पाकिस्तान एफर्ट्स इन इवैक्यूएटिंग पीपल फ्रॉम अफगानिस्तान एंड ही सेड पाकिस्तान रोल इन दिस रिगार्ड इज बीइंग अप्रिशिएटेड अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड एंड ही वेंट ऑन टू से दैट पाकिस्तान एम्बेसी इन काबुल इज वर्किंग ट्वेंटी एंड रिगार्डिंग आंसरिंग अ क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग टी डी पी सेट पाकिस्तान वुड नॉट वॉन्ट टू सी अफगानिस्तान बिकम अ सेफ हेवन फॉर टेररिस्ट ग्रुप such as a ttp and also said that pakistan's relations with the us are normal